Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and this is my commentary journal on Mia and Onyx by Tanya Bond. So I decided to create a pastel piece and I did use mainly pen pastels and pastel pencils with a bit of pencil for detail. So this was also the first time I used some new paper and this is from Canson Me Tint and this paper is a bit gritted, it's a bit textured and it. I wanted to try this out because it allowed me to build up layers because the paper was so fine and textured and gritted. So what that means is that you can keep building up the paper, you can keep building up the textures and the colors because of the surface of the paper. So as you guys know, when paper becomes flat and smooth, it's really hard to build layers on layers. But because this paper isn't smooth, it is gritted, it does allow you to build up a lot of layers. And that's why it's appropriate for pastels. So because this is a majority pen pastel or pastel piece, I decided to use this paper. Now, because I have been using pen pastels as our foundation for my pieces, I think that in the future I will use this paper for any of my pastel pieces or any foundation pastel pieces because I find that pencil on top of this paper does work really well as well. Of course, I won't be able to achieve that burnished smooth feeling or look but I can build a lot of textures on this piece and I can really create a lot of dimension. So I like that it's gritted and it's textured. So in the future, I will definitely be using pen pastels on this paper with a bit of pencil for detail. So Mia in Onyx, I wanted to, I wanted to color them and create an artwork of them looking like a pair so like the mother of dragons type of thing and if you are the mother of dragons you and the dragon must have similar features right so I did them in a very similar color tone so I did them very warm now my vision for this was to do a very warm colored piece with contrasting eyes so when I look at this sketch I, th I see their eyes are very have very much reptile characteristics and I really wanted to I really wanted to show that later on and you will see that later on as well with my choices of colors and how I've done it so if you guys are not familiar with pen pastels they are a pastel form in a little disc and it's very similar to makeup you apply it like you paint and it dries and what's great about this is that there's minimal dust and the colors are very vibrant and permanent. The tools, the soft tools are really nice too. I think at this point I didn't have that many soft tools, but the tool that I'm using now was probably one of my favorite throughout this project. If you don't have this tool, you could find an alternative, which is one of those cheap dollar store eyeshadow brushes. They're very much similar to that. And if you buy the soft tools from Pen Pastel, you'll see a small black eyeshadow tool that is very much similar to what you find in your makeup. So if you want to find cheap pen pastel tools, you could just go to a dollar store and get that eyeshadow brush. And they're they're really cheap as well. So I would recommend that. I just bought the pen pastel soft tools kit, but when I saw it, I just thought I could just get Later on, if I wanted to find replacements, I can definitely go to a dollar store and get a bunch of cheap eyeshadow brushes. So with that eyeshadow brush, I'm adding some detail with some yellows and oranges on the skin. Obviously, because I'm working with pan pastels, I'm not able to create a lot of detail with this medium because I, I believe this medium is kind of for a large surface area. So it's about um, achieving smooth, large surfaces. Now, if I want to do details, I would use something like pastel pencils on top or pencils. So that's my that was my goal. I already knew that I already knew the restrictions of what I could achieve with pen pastels. 
Now, I actually did do a. Tu- there will be a tutorial on this piece. It's a matter of whether you have all the products or you have things that are similar. Now, I did have. I I could foresee in my mind that not everyone has these tools, which is fine because I thought that. People could learn something from this tutorial, even though they don't have the pieces. They could learn how to do hair, or they could just see the benefits of using pen pastel in their work. Now, if you look here, you'll be able to see details in the background. The way I achieved that was creating one color base with a bunch of different reds in a, I guess, textured lay down. And then on top of that, I used a stencil and I, I went on top with a light red. And there you will see those little details in the background. I find them very interesting, but very subtle. And that is probably one of my favorite aspects of this piece. I find it very beautiful and I love the fine detail. You can see here, I'm using some Caran d'Ache pastel pencils to create some details on top of the pan pastel. Now, I wanted to do this because I want to take the opportunity to use these pastel pencils because I haven't used these pastel pencils in a while and sometimes I want to give all my products equal amount of love. So I took them out and I used them. So this was probably one of the first times I used my pen pastel full set and I just here you will see the texture laid down with the reds and then later on I went in with that stencil. Now I was experimenting with different types of tools to apply the pastel with and I used an old makeup brush to dust away things but I think in the future I'm going to invest in a little small vacuum so I can vacuum away all those dust and eraser sh- like sharpenings and whatnot because I know I'm using a brush to dust everything away but the last thing I want to do is inhale those um, products now of course all all professional art products have some form of those ingredients or that product should not be ingested so I think that I shouldn't sniff them up obviously so Brushing away the dust isn't the smartest thing and I'm thinking later on I will get a little vacuum to collect that that off material because it can be it can be um, quite harmful to ingest products like that obviously I don't ingest a lot but to be safe later in the future I'm definitely going to get a vacuum a little vacuum or a little dustpan or something like that to you know to pick up those loose pigments or um, loose erasing erasers or sharpenings or whatever. So I think if you guys are into pastel, you should really, or pencil even, you should really consider getting a little vacuum just to collect those little um, particles that kind of fall off sometimes. And when you're working with pastel, look, it's not a lot of dust, but if you're like, it's not a lot of dust compared to using pastel blocks or you know pastel blocks but there is some dust obviously not a lot but I do think it's to be safe and sorry to you know to dispose of that dust properly rather than inhaling it or sniffing it so that's my recommendation in the future here I'm doing a lot of contrast with the skin by using these pastel papers and you can see from here the how gritted the surface is because you can see the you can see that texture that I'm laying down and you know what I really like it I actually think it's really nice and obviously because we're working with pastel here I actually can't use I can't use um, I can't use a solvent on pastel because it's a dry medium If I was to place down texture rather than pastel for the hair, then yes, I can use a solvent. But because the hair was done, the hair base was done in pastel, I don't recommend using solvents like I did, I do in other pieces. 
but the thing I like about this is because we're using pastel you can really create a lot of details and because the surface is so gritted you can see those details as well and they're very soft and um, they're very soft and you can see that grain from the paper and I think I really like that I think that texture is really nice and texture adds dimension to artworks and I think it just gives it a layer another layer of wow so normally I would put a base of ink but the pan pastel still turned out really nice using that as the hair base going on top with some pastel pencils I do like the Carandish pastel pencils I think they're really beautiful and they are very high quality this soft tool was was easily one of my favorites and I used it throughout the whole thing and you can see because the colors are very smooth they're very blended they're even um, obviously with practice things will improve but for I guess it's been a year since I've used pastels and coming back into it I feel like I still got it um, what I mean is like I still have I still can pick it up I'm I don't struggle with it um, and it turned out quite nice but yeah I as you can see here I erased a bit of the eyes on the dragon and the character Mia and Onyx because I want to do that in pencil later on Here I'm using some luminance pencils to create detail in the eye and I wanted to create a contrasting color. You'll see the eye in the right top hand corner. That is my inspiration. I like to use reference images to inspire me and that eye was what I was, I was basing it off. I was creating a green eye with a really bright yellow um, inside. I actually did go on top of the pupils. Um, and later on I go in with a Posca pen but the reason why I chose this color is because I really wanted to create a sense of contrast between the warm tones in the background so if you look carefully the lid of this character Mia is actually very small her eyelids are very small and what I love about this gridded paper was it gave me the ability to build up layers and change the shape of the eyelid so I actually did make it a lot a lot higher so I made her eyelid a lot larger and I just did that because I just thought her eyelids were way too small I thought that we needed to create more bigger eyes so I created a larger crease And then I went on top with a bit of pastel just to give it that that cut crease type of look. I really like it. The type of makeup that I've created on this character is very natural. And then I went in with a brown luminance pencil to create some contrast and create shadow in the crease of the eye. And then I did some shadow under the eye as well just to, just to kind of, I guess harmonize that shadow color I use on the crease in the eye that orangey brown color and I use that same color underneath and then we highlighted the brow and I was really happy with it I went in with a luminous pencil to do the whites in the background and I went in with yellow for around the eye just to blend the eye and the pan pastel orange together and here I'm using a Caran d'Ache blender pencil from Luminance just to blend everything together. I actually like it. This is a, a it is a completely made out of the blending material. So there actually is no lead or core. The whole thing is made out of that blender pencil, which is really cool. 
I went in with some luminance pencils to create more shadow, highlight and contour. You can see the grain in the face, but when you look at a, at a distance, it looks really nice. It looks very soft and I really love it. I get I go back in with a uni pin fine liner to create details on the eye and it really looks like a reptile here. We go in and add details on the eyelashes as well and we do the same thing for the reptile in her arms. If I was to give myself any criticism I would be I would be very careful on using Posca pens on the hair because I feel like I got to achieve the same thing with a white luminance pencil or a white pastel pencil. It was there was no need to use Posca pen in the hair. If anything, it made it it made it pop out a bit too much and it made it seem unnatural. It is pink hair, of course, but to criticize myself, I would to I would advise myself to not use Posca pen with pastel hair like if you were doing pastel mediums in the hair I wouldn't use a Posca pen to highlight I would just use a pencil or a pastel pencil to highlight with a white color um, that is my only criticism but I also went in with some brown luminances to create more contrast and um, contrast on the face and I really like it I, th I think the the tones in the skin are beautiful I'm really proud of it. I'm still trying to get the hang on mixing skin tones with pen pastel. It's something that I'm still struggling with or I have that doubt. But I always give you guys advice on when you feel like you screwed it up, just keep pushing yourself because you can always fix things. And sometimes I have to remind myself of the same thing because sometimes I think Sometimes a bit of, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I feel like I've ruined it and I just want to throw it away or start again. But a lot of the time I think it's great, it's a great um, characteristic if you just keep pushing at your, at your work and you don't give up too soon. So here I'm using pencil to create highlights around the face and I feel like if I use that instead of the Posca pen it would be very soft and more natural. So the Posca pen is like a paint marker and paint markers sometimes are a bit too in your face. So I would advise myself to or I advise you guys to keep the Posca pens for highlighting jewelry, highlighting eyes, that type of thing. Things that can be blocky but things that need to be natural like hair or highlights on the lips and the skin, keep it to pencil, keep it to mediums that can can be blended out easily. So I put Posca pen on the lace of Mia's dress and I was actually thinking of going on top with metallic but once I saw that white on the dress I just thought that it made the character pop out so much more and I just I wanted to stick with it. And so I did, I left it white and I thought it gave a bit like a very large sense of contrast on the dress and the figure. So I left it white. The crown on her head I did in like a pearl silver color from Fine Tech and I left the outline white as well. Obviously using a metallic paint is quite flat but I try to keep it simple and... I try to keep it simple with metallics most of the time and I think I did it. I did I think I did it. I didn't push it too far. So here, Posca pens look great when you use them in big sections for highlighting eyes and I would advise you to stick to that. So I'm happy with the eyes. I think they look really nice. Of course we have to do some peel porn because I love it when you peel back that tape and there's that crisp edge. I think it's it just is very satisfying so I thought you guys would appreciate the same thing anyway guys I hope you guys have enjoyed this commentary if you have any questions about the products about the mediums um, comment below uh, do not hesitate to ask if you liked the video please give it a thumbs up if you are not subscribed and you just came across my channel I would really appreciate if you guys would subscribe and become part of this shine bright design family if you guys love my work and would love to support me 
you can click on my Patreon, which is in the description box below. And for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to all my videos and color charts. So guys, that's all from me. And I hope you guys have enjoyed. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. So guys, here is a bit of peel porn. I think I love it when you peel back that piece of tape and nothing has ripped off from the page behind and you have that really crisp, clean line between your work and the paper. So I thought I would add that in for you guys because I find something so satisfying about watching these little peels. Anyway guys, if you have any questions or comments, um, comment below. If you liked it, please press that like button and if you are not subscribed yet, uh, come on and subscribe and join my little YouTube family. I hope you guys have enjoyed this piece. I know it's really different, but I hope it's a tutorial or a video that you can follow along and gain inspiration from. Anyway guys, I've really enjoyed doing this piece. I'll definitely be doing more pieces like this in the future because I enjoyed doing it. It was a really nice process. Not many errors or frustrations occurred in this, but I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.